ready to start recording. Perfect. Hi, um, welcome to the webinar. Today we have some special guests here. We have Ashlyn Hudson from Toby Dynavox, um, Elizabeth Walker, and Emily Conklin. And Ashley is going to be um, talking to us today about the um, board maker um, curriculum and using it with students who use switch scanning. So um, I'm really excited. I'm excited to start using this tool with um, my students and I know several people on the call are as well. Um, so I'm gonna let you go ahead and get started, Ashlyn. Thanks, I am super excited to be here and I have to apologize. There is a tree that's being removed at my house and I thought that they'd be done with the chainsaws by now because I'm in Texas, so I'm six o'clock here. Um, and they just turned on more things outside. So my apologies if it's a little bit loud. Hopefully you can all hear me okay and hopefully they're wrapping up. Um, but yes, I've got two of my awesome coworkers here joining Emily Conklin and Betsy Walker, Elizabeth, um, she's incognito um, in chat. Um, they are your local reps. So if you have questions about your board maker account or if you use um, TD Snap or uh, any AAC devices from Toby Danabox, these ladies can answer questions and support you in your area. Okay, so um, just know that they're here monitoring chat and uh, can make connections if you have any questions or need some support in those areas. And um, I am a learning consultant for Toby Dynavox. And today we are going to talk about board maker curriculum, all of the amazing stuff that's pre-made for you. And we're gonna look at how you can utilize switch access. Um, there is a handout, Heidi just posted the link to it in chat. Um, and we'll be adding that occasionally throughout so if you want to have that on hand, download it, it kind of gives a nice summary of everything I'm going to talk about today with some additional links and supports um, for you to access following the session. So if you don't capture everything in this hour, there's lots of resources to go back and check out in that handout. Okay, I am going to turn off my video uh, just to kind of reduce some of the things on my screen and say again, just welcome and thank you for being here. A little bit about me, I am a former special education teacher and I'm also an occupational therapist. So this is something I'm super excited about um, talking about. I love pre-made curriculum because I was a special ed teacher and I know how limited your time is. And as an OT, I love access. So talking about these two things together is really um, something that I get a little bit excited about. So if you're a teacher, a speech therapist, a parent, any other role out there working to support learners with complex needs. Uh, I think that you're going to leave here with some ideas and some different things that um, will also excite you. Get ready to learn about the different pre-made curricula that is available to you with BoardMaker. We're going to talk about what all is included, how to access them, and then we're going to look at how to set up different access methods in BoardMaker really focusing on switch scanning because I know you all have been working on that with Heidi and Setsy and it's such an amazing series you've all been working on so I'm really excited to kind of plug into that a little bit. Before I jump into the pre-made curricula and get everybody's all excited about all the things that are ready made for you to teach, I want us to start off and do just a quick overview of the BoardMaker ecosystem. I wanna make sure that when I'm talking about different things in different places that you're all with me. BoardMaker 7 has three components, okay? So we have our editor. This is that installed software where you're gonna create your activities. It's your artistic workspace, your canvas, where all of your ideas can come to life. The website, myboardmaker.com, is where we've had ideas that we've created and shared um, that you can access. That's where this curriculum is that I'm talking about, where it lives, and where we're going to go and find it today. The website is also where we manage our student accounts. We create student accounts there. We assign activities to them so that they can access those activities, either the ones that you've made or the ones that we've made for you, um, so that they can have access to them at school or at home, wherever they are. The third component is the Boardmaker Student Center. And this is where we're gonna play the activities. So today's, um, 
session, I'm going to be really spending most of my time showing you things in the website and in the student center. So we're going to go to the website, check out the curriculum, look at how we assign it to students, connect it to them. Then we're going to spend some time in the student center looking at the activities. And then you'll also notice that here is also where we go to customize student settings. This is where we're going to go to set up access methods like switch scanning. Okay, so just kind of have those pieces in mind that you know where things live. And um, I'll try to make sure that I am calling out where I am in different places in the presentation. Throughout our little session today, we're going to talk about Mr. Davis. He is a third year teacher um, working with a wide variety of different learners in his classroom. Uh, and he's got a new kiddo that's using switch scanning as an access method. Mr. Davis teaches multiple subjects, multiple grade levels, doesn't really have all the time that he would like to create all those activities for all those different levels in his classroom and ensure that those activities are accessible for all of his students. So Mr. Davis utilizes BoardMaker and the pre-made activities to teach his kiddos. He uses pre-made interactive curriculum found on myboardmaker.com that give him evidence-based instruction on core words, emergent literacy skills, comprehension activities that are accessible for grade level literature, and activities that he can utilize to support the development of um, world knowledge. These are the four pre-made curricula on myboardmaker.com. This is what we're gonna be spending the first chunk of the session really getting to know. These curricula are all aligned to standards, they're research-based, and they really focus on key skills that you're probably teaching to your learners. The first one that you see here listed here that we're gonna talk about today is Core First Learning. This is a curriculum that teaches children to find, use, and read core words through reading, writing, and language activities. Reading Avenue is an accessible emergent reading program that provides comprehensive instruction um, across the essential components of literacy development. BookBridge is this really cool curriculum that um, provides accessible activities that focus on texts that are typically taught in the elementary grade levels. So giving learners um, ways to engage with those grade level texts. Expedition Education is designed to build literacy skills and world knowledge with instruction about cultures from around the world. So we are going to spend the next little chunk of time getting to know each of these curricula a little bit better. Starting with Core First Learning. As I mentioned, it is that accessible curriculum teaching us to find, use, and read core words, right? So it is going to utilize both um, educational activities like reading and writing, but it also has some nice playful activities that really encourage meaningful use of those words um, so that we can increase the comprehension and the automaticity of um, the use of those core words. So why core words? Well, these are, if you're not familiar with them, the core words are the 300 words that make up 85% of what we say. Unfortunately, we are that predictable and we talk with the same words. We read, we write, and we communicate with the same basically 300 words 85% of the time. 50 of those words account for 40 to 50% of everyday language. See, we're kind of boring. But these words are awesome for our um, emergent communicators and our emergent literacy learners because they generalize across settings. They're super functional and they're appropriate no matter what age you are. So if you're working with individuals who are a little bit older and they're still needing some support with communication and language, these core words are just as appropriate for them as they are for our elementary learners. Core words are not just supporting communication, they're also supporting literacy. So when we're working on those reading and writing activities, we're supporting their communication. And when we're working on those communication skills, we're also improving their literacy. And as I mentioned, these are 
frequently used words, they're super flexible. We can use them across lots of different contexts. They're functional. We're going to help us say the most um, that we need to say and we want to say with as little language as possible. And they're for everyone. These words work for everybody. So that's why we're gonna focus on core words. That's why Mr. Davis is super jazzed about using this curriculum. He's also excited that he comes with this really great um, lesson plan, okay? So core first learning is this curriculum that takes 36 of those most frequently used core words and each word has a structured lesson sequence. Okay, it's gonna follow this guide right here for every word, it becomes very predictable. We're gonna introduce the word with a book. We're gonna do a picture walk with the book. We're gonna read and talk about what we notice. We're gonna reread the book several times, finding the word on the student's device or communication system while reading. We're gonna be doing lots of modeling. Um, and this structured approach is really great because it gives our learners that predictability in their days, lets them focus all that cognitive energy on the content, not those task expectations. In addition to that overall general guide, kind of how you structure each word, each word also includes these detailed lesson plans, which are really great for other people who might be supporting your learner with this curriculum. Maybe you're giving some activities to the parents to do at home. This kind of scripting is really going to help them feel supported and know how to jump in there and engage with this, uh, with these activities. Paraprofessionals really love and respond well to this. Even me as a first year teacher, I would have loved something like this to really support me as I got used to implementing this curriculum. So know that all of this are uh, as part of the curriculum. And the reason that Mr. Davis uses this curriculum, obviously it's because he loves focusing on those, using that core word strategy, but he likes using core first learning as a curriculum because he's able to assign the books and activities to his students so they can access them at home and at school. He likes that he has the opportunity to read the books with his students, but also do writing and graphing and sorting activities to provide numerous opportunities to model those words on the communication systems in meaningful ways. So it's not just, let's find want 10 times, it's find want while reading this book, while playing bingo, while doing an adaptive writing activity. Because this is what's gonna help our learners not only learn the location of the word, but also the meanings. Mr. Davis has students that go out to general education. He's got learners that are working on carryover at home. So he really likes it. This um, curriculum includes lots of ways to support and collaborate with others. But also Mr. Davis is super excited about the fact that it's accessible. Core First Learning is an interactive curriculum that is gonna allow all of his students, no matter their access method, the ability to engage with the materials. Ashlyn, can I just ask a question? Has everybody seen the slide deck? Because I am seeing it, but I got a message in um, chat that someone was not sure if they were, um, I was wondering if they were supposed to be seeing something. Okay, I see one person in chat, the cute little avocado emoji is seeing it. Is anybody not? Could I just um, say that I am seeing it, but I had a message, a very small one that said switch to seeing the shared presentation. So I was not initially seeing it, but that message was very small up by the recording message that I had to tap on it. Okay, I've never had that one happen before. Nor had I. <laughs> <laughs> Learn something new every day with Zoom. All right, if we're good, I'm gonna keep going. But if anybody does have any difficulty, please use chat and let us know. And know that this is also being recorded. So um, you'll be able to go back and revisit if you need to. All right. So now that I've explained what Core First Learning is and talked about why I'm so excited about it, I, I wanna show you just a few activities from Core First Learning. And then I'm gonna move into uh, the website and show you where it is and where some of those resources are. So this is a recording of um, a few of the activities from the Student Center. So when you are in the Student Center, 
you open it up. These are the activities that you, there's a thumbnail for each activity that you either, either assign to a student or that you have on your playlist. And we'll dig into that a little bit more. But you'll see here, I have three books for the word want. Each core word has three interactive books. Um, so the, they learn the words in different contexts. We also have writing activities, um, this picture graph activity that is going to help them utilize the word in meaningful ways. So I'm gonna hit play on this video and kind of talk a little bit about what we're seeing. I think I hit play. Okay, there we go. So you select an activity just by clicking Hats. on it. Got nice big interactive. Good morning, buttons. Dan. What do you want to be today? Today, I want to be a construction worker. Good morning, Dan. What do you want to be today? Today, I want to be a cowboy. Good morning, Dan. What do you want to be today? Today, I want to be a firefighter. Each of the books also include these phrases so we can have a little bit of supported shared reading conversation back and forth. Now I'm gonna show a, a writing activity. It's also gonna support the word want. Each writing activity has three different levels of support. So this is a moderate level of support where the sentences are already written for them. There's minimum support where they have to go in and construct their sentences. I want to be an astronaut when I grow up. And there's also maximum support where they have fewer clicks to create their writing. Here is that graph so they can go around and have that functional fun activity asking people, what do you want for one lunch? One hot lunch. Graphing it, talking one about it, lunch. using that word in a meaningful way. This also includes that um, those talk built in phrases to support that communication. And then this is another um, writing activity where they can go in and talk about what they want. This is with um, less support. You see there's vocabulary words. There's also core words and a keyboard. A pizza party. So they can go in and really start saying, playing around with creative spelling and really starting to say whatever it is that they want to say. There are some editing functions over here that we can start supporting them learning how to utilize really giving them some nice supports as they begin I want writing a pizza party and seeing themselves as writers. Okay, so that's just a high level overview of some of the activities that are included in core first learning. What I want to do now is move us over to the website, myboardmaker.com. I'm going to click right here where it says curriculum. This is where all four of those instructional solutions live. If you have a subscription to Boardmaker, you have access to all of this content. It is included. Okay, so here you see at the top, we've got Core First Learning. And as you scroll down, there's Reading Avenue, Expedition Education, and Book Bridge. If I click on Use It next to Core First Learning, and then um, assuming most of us are here in the US, I'm gonna select this one. If you want those UK spellings, you can utilize that one instead. And then you'll see three different sets. So there's 36 words. So each set is 12 words. We recommend starting with word one. There's a lot of research behind the order that we introduce these words in. And if you're wanting to know some of that information, you can come up here to resources, um, explore some of the table of contents. There's that quick lesson guide, also a lesson guide for parents. Then if you want to get into the curriculum, select the word. Again, we have some additional resources here. There's that specific lesson plan with those detailed scripted out step-by-step -step directions. A letter to the parent with some ideas of some things they can do with the word go. And then all three of the books in printable format. Next to each of these resources, you'll see two different tools. We've got a little magnifying glass. You can view the PDF or you can download that um, PDF and have it saved to your computer. 
We keep scrolling down, you'll start to see the activities. Each word is going to include a quiz so we can recognize how um, often are they recognizing this word? What's the automaticity of um, seeing it, knowing what it is? If you wanna use this as a kind of a pre and post test, you can do that. Then you're gonna have your books. Okay, so you've got your interactive book and then you've got your printable book. If you wanna have that low tech copy on hand, add to the classroom library, send it home with the learners, you can do that. Um, but you also have that interactive book, which is the one that we're gonna to utilize to set our learners up with that switch scanning. As you scroll down, you see the writing activity. We've got that max support, moderate support, minimum support. I encourage you to check these out, see what the right fit is for your learners. And then we've got bingo games, flashcards, a list poem for additional writing, a fun matching game, and then those other books that are gonna be addressing that same core word. Okay, so all of this content for that single core word. To connect this content to your students, you see this right here, this little tool, it's a person, there's like a little bubble over their head. When you hover over it, you see it says assign to student. If I click on that button, all of the students on my roster are gonna appear. I can assign this to everyone by clicking in that top box. Or I could just come in and say, all right, today, Missy Elliott, this week, we're really focusing on the word go for Missy. And so I can go in and I can just assign it to her. Click assign. And then when Missy logs into the student center, this uh, activity will be there waiting for her. Okay. The other way to play these activities, to get these activities to that student center is by adding it to your playlist. So if you want a curated list or group of activities to engage with your students, creating your playlist, just like you have a music playlist for doing the things you do, you can have a board maker playlist. And I'll show you mine in just a bit so you can kind of see how it works. But you just click right there on the add to playlist button and it's gonna add this activity to your playlist so that when you sign into the student center, it's there waiting for you. All right. Over here, underneath the sets, you see we also have some device overlays for some different types of devices, some print communication boards, and that program documentation is where you can get in. The white paper is gonna give you some research behind it, overview of the program, and some frequently asked questions. All right, so curriculum, core first learning, and then you can start exploring the curriculum here. All right, so now, we just went to mywordmaker.com. We checked that out. We are going to keep on moving and start talking about Reading Avenue. This one is that comprehensive accessible reading program, really focusing on the essential components of emergent literacy. If you're familiar with the research done by Drs. Karen Erickson and David Copenhaver, they've really focused their research on those essential components of emergent literacy instruction. What do our learners who haven't gotten that conventional level yet need to learn? What is that foundation we need to provide to get them ready for conventional literacy learning? And that's where Reading Avenue um, comes in. That's what it's based on. And it's going to provide instruction on those different components that we know our learners need. Mainly, uh, going to provide lots of direct and sort of embedded functional instruction on alphabet knowledge and those letter to sound relationships or phonological awareness. These two foundational skills in emergent literacy instruction are huge and research has shown that individuals with all levels of intellectual ability can benefit from instruction in these two areas and learn to generalize and apply these skills. Okay, so it's super important to make sure our learners can recognize the letters and that they associate the letters to the sounds that they make. Reading Avenue kind of chunks that um, instruction by focusing on these 37 rhyme endings. These were identified way back in 1970 by Wiley and Durrell as um, the most common word endings that allow us to identify, read, and spell 500 words. It's a little bit of a shortcut to learning how to decode everything. Um, so what Reading Avenue does is it focuses instruction on these 
common rhymes with these consonant onsets. Okay, so this is how Reading Avenue is structured. There are eight units, um, and each unit is going to focus on four consonant onsets with four specific word endings. As you move through these eight units, you'll have instruction on all of those 37 common endings, and there's carryover from unit to unit, so there is uh, lots of additional practice opportunity. The other thing that's great about Reading Avenue is that it's not just one level. It's not a one size fits all curriculum. There are three different levels of each unit. So we've got level or Avenue A, which is super um, emergent entry level, errorless learning, very, very introductory. And then we've got Avenue B adds a little bit more rigor, a little bit more comprehension, knowledge base, um, application of skills still appropriate for our emergent literacy learners. And then Avenue C takes it up one more notch, but still appropriate for those kiddos. Um, so as you go through these eight units, you can really give three different opportunities to practice these onsets and practice these word endings. Mr. Davis loves Reading Avenue because it's working on alphabet awareness. It's giving lots of opportunities for phonemic awareness, things that he knows his learners need and that he's not having to create and um, structure himself. It's also supporting vocabulary development, lots of opportunities to recognize um, new words and to build that vocabulary. It has a ton of writing activities, adapted writing activities. We know how important it is to give meaningful opportunities to write, because that's going to help our learners develop both literacy and communication skills. But writing is hard, especially for our learners with different access needs. And this program provides lots of differentiated um, materials for that. It also provides those three different levels of content, so we can really find the right fit for each of our students. And it's going to hit on accessibility. His learners are going to be able to engage with these materials. If they need to turn pages of books with their eye gaze device, they can do that. If they're going to manipulate letters and words or complete writing activities with switch scanning, we can set them up for that as well. If Mr. Davis or you are using Reading Avenue and you're not sure where to start, this is our Avenue selection tool. You can go in answer five simple questions about the learner, and it will help you identify the correct level for that individual. So it's gonna ask about their letter awareness, their understanding of letter and sound relationships, word recognition, participation in shared reading, and then what their writing skills look like. So now that I've given you a bit about the program, let's look at some of the content. Just like Core First Learning, this program has a ton of books. There are over 120 books in Reading Avenue that are all accessible. And each book has three different guided reading options. So if you're familiar with shared reading and guided reading, we want to give our learners different purposes for reading so that they have um, something to kind of connect to as they're going through and reading. It really helps us learn how to think while we're reading and have more comprehension of what we read. So what we're gonna see when I hit play on this video is that embedded accessible guided reading activity that's part of this book. Which of these might live in a coral reef? It's errorless. Fish. They can select one or none. And when they're ready, they can progress to read the book. They've got these big buttons. Read to predict which animals live in this coral reef. They're in control. Our home. See lots of nice, lovely, real life photos. Some of the books also have um, uh, cartoon types of images. There's lots of mixture. There's some that's repetitive text like this where they can start to pick up on the patterns. There are alphabet books. The coral reef is my home. I am a jellyfish. You'll see lots of variety with the texts that are included. Went through this one kind of fast so we could get to the end and you could see the uh, guided reading activity um, after book questions. 
Which animals live in this coral reef? So we go through the book, we read about the animals, Jellyfish. and we're going to identify which ones live This there. animal lives in this coral reef. This is an Avenue Whale. B book, and so it has This animal did not live in this here. coral reef. Um, but it gives them that feedback. Are no, you sure you want there. to exit? Try again. Um, so that's what one of the guided reading books look like. And now here's one of our... Pick three letters to go with this word ending. Alphabet awareness, phonological awareness activities. Best. Rest. Mest. It's not about now making pick three real letters words. to go with the next word ending. It's just about playing around with language. Bug. Rug. Mug. Take a look at the words you made. With the same Click activity, on all the real words. We start sorting by real words. Rest. Best. Mug. Mest. If it's not a real word, they hear it, but it just doesn't move over to that column. You found all the real words. Then the activity goes one Click more Click on step. all the words that end in the spelling pattern O, W. Mo. Mug. Same thing. If it's not a word that goes there. Flow. It sounds You found all the words that end in the spelling pattern O, W. So lots of repetition there. And here's one more activity with a visual scene. Search the scene for things that begin with the letters F, L. There are five of them. Fly. Flag. Flamingo. Flip flops. Search the scene for things that begin with the letters F, L. There are five of them. Flame. You found all the things that begin with the letters F, L. Click on the objects to hear the word again, or click on the exit button if you are finished. So again, lots of different ways that we can engage our learners um, with these literacy activities. Just like core first learning, this curriculum is on myboardmaker.com. Let's go take a quick look over here. I'm gonna go back to where it says all instructional solutions. Again, with Reading Avenue, I'm gonna select use it, US English. Remember all of these instructions, everything I'm showing you is in that handout, the links in chat. Um, so don't feel like you're having to remember all of this stuff, lots and lots of resources there for you to follow up on following this session. When I get into Reading Avenue, just like Core First Learning, we have some resources here that you can um, look at. You can open that PDF or you can download them. Nice overview, frequently asked questions. The research uh, that it's based on is in this white paper. And then you can choose any of these units. There's no particular place that you have to start. You can pick what your learners are interested in or maybe the sounds that you want them to focus on. Um, you'll notice that whichever unit you click on, the first thing that you'll see is that avenue selection tool. So you can open that up, answer those questions, and then figure out which avenue to start with. Underneath the avenue, the resources tab is going to give you a lesson guide, so step by step, what activities to do on each day. Also includes some visual schedule supports ready made for you. And then when you click on a book, this is where you'll find all of those activities. So we've got our book, then we've got our book with those embedded guided reading activities, those different purposes for reading, some comprehension kinds of questions before and after, lots of writing activities, rhymes. Um, those visual scenes, word searches, stamp and write. So you'll see all of this content included in just this one unit. Just like with Core First Learning, you can assign to students with the assign button, or you can add to your playlist with the playlist button. We have the activities grouped in sets up here. If you wanted to assign an entire day of instruction, you could do it that way, or you can come down and do the activities individually, whatever works best for you and your learners. Now let's take a closer look at BookBridge. It is that read to learn program that's going to take
books that are read, um, commonly read in fourth, fifth, second, third grade, and it's going to give accessible activities to those books. So here is um, a selection of some of the books that are included for um, fourth to fifth grade. And let's say for Hatchet, there is um, chapter by chapter activities to um, engage your learners, give them accessible ways of um, learning the vocabulary, demonstrating knowledge, having comprehension types of um, activities and writing activities connected with each chapter of each of these books. Just like our other curricula, this has really detailed lesson guides. And it's gonna assist you getting started with each book so you can plan your instruction. Each chapter, we're gonna introduce key vocabulary words. Then we're gonna have an anchor activity to activate that background knowledge and getting our learners to think about what they already might know about those key concepts and things that are gonna um, be coming up in the upcoming chapter. We're also gonna have a suggested purpose for reading. What are we gonna be thinking about while we're reading this chapter? There are accompanying communication boards to support students and an application activity so that they have something to sort of apply their knowledge after reading the chapter, helping to support solidifying their new knowledge and vocabulary. Um, all of the application activities, um, like many of our other activities, are differentiated. There's three different levels, so you can find the right fit for your students. In addition to um, all those great uh, lesson plans, the lesson guide also includes links to adapted chapters for each book from Tar Hill Reader. So you can um, click on a link in the lesson plan and have that accessible way for the learner to engage with that chapter in a modified format. Mr. Davis loves the vocabulary instruction, really helping introduce his students to um, words that are um, really powerful and uh, functional. It's gonna support their comprehension with that anchor read apply method. Lots of opportunities for that writing that we love. The predictable routines throughout each of these curricula, the predictability is really important so that students, again, they learn the structure of the activities so they can focus their energy on the content, not the expectations of what we're asking them to do. It's also a great way to give his learners access to grade level texts and it's accessible. So learners with different access methods can engage and complete these activities with more independence. So let's look at a few of the book bridge activities. This first activity that we're gonna see in the video is the um, vocabulary routine. Remember, this is just for that one chapter where we're going to introduce four key terms um, for the student to kind of have awareness of before they read the chapter. After they, so, you know, sort the words out, based on what they know, don't know, or aren't sure. There's gonna be an instruction, an instructional page we're about to see on each of the vocabulary terms. Instruments. They get the definition, a sentence, and then they get to pick a way that's gonna help them remember that word. This kind of becomes their own little vocabulary book. So this is that uh, activity set. So I'm gonna pause it real quick and talk about this for a second. So with each chapter, there's gonna be a review activity to recall what happened in the previous chapter. Okay, so the sequencing activity, we are gonna do this after we've read chapter one of Hatchet together as a class. Now we're gonna say, okay, let's talk about what happened and in what order did it happen. Oops, that's not what I wanted to happen. There we go.
He gets it wrong. It doesn't let him put it there. Brian was flying to Canada. His mother gave him a hatchet. Brian tried flying the plane alone. The pilot died. We also have this anchor activity to get ready for the upcoming chapter we're going to read. Make a choice to complete this sentence. Cool. Flying in a plane is? Cool. Make another choice to go in the next sentence. Flying in a plane is? Exciting. Flying in a plane is? Exciting. And we also what? have writing activities. Is a hatchet? You'll see this one's a moderate support. Why? Is the book called Hatchet? So we get the starters and finishers. How? Will he use it? Where? Will he keep it? So just an, another example of a way that all of those work together. For time purposes, I'm just going to quickly show you where that is and kind of how it's structured. So we have the second to third grade band with books from that um, grade, those two grade levels, and then we have our fourth through fifth grade band. So you click on there and then you can select any of these books and you'll find those um, lesson plans and there's a, the overview lesson guide. And then for each chapter, you'll have detailed lesson plans and then moderate support, maximum support, minimum support. Just like with the others, it has them listed out individually here. You can assign them or you can do the whole sets. Okay. Last curriculum is expedition education. This is that um, curriculum that's gonna really work on literacy skills, but it's also focusing on world knowledge and instruction about cultures from around the world. I really love this curriculum. I think it's got a lot of really cool activities. Um, within it, there is a foundational unit that kind of introduces the learners to the overall structure of the program, kind of a introduction to social studies and geography and history. Um, and then there are these different countries that we can jump in and learn about. Each unit includes five books that are laid out like textbooks. They're going to focus on history, geography, a day in the life of someone that lives in that country, and other cultural highlights. Also has vocabulary lessons, interactive maps, graphic organizers, and of course, our writing activities. We have these lesson guides and detailed lesson plans really helping you get started and structure instruction. Mr. Davis loves that he's working on comprehension while also talking about geography, history, and cultures. Vocabulary words that maybe we wouldn't think to teach our learners, but they're common and they're impactful. They're gonna help our learners receptive and expressive language skills grow. Also gonna have lots of writing opportunities, map skills, which is always great and functional, talking about cultural diversity, and it's accessible. So let's take a look at a few of the activities included in Expedition Education. Can you find Japan on the globe? So you have the option of hearing sentence by sentence read aloud, or you can have the whole page read to you, or you can read it yourself. You see the text is a little bit Higher level. Japan contains thousands of islands. They can click anywhere and have it read to them. And we've got these feature sorting pages where we're going to start learning how to label the different features Map. within a book. Photograph. Caption. Just like with other activities, Heading. 
If they get it incorrect, it doesn't let them place it there. You labeled all of the features of the page. Incorrectly. Then we've got some graphic organizers. Things you see in Japan today. Helping working on that application of what we learn when we read the books. Driving the newest cars. Modern. Driving the newest cars. Traditional. Learning calligraphy. Japan is a modern country. Because. People use the latest technology. Got those writing activities. With the supported starters. Japan and is a traditional country. Because. Students still learn calligraphy in school. These are super helpful for letting our learners see themselves as writers and build that confidence. And then, this is probably my favorite part of expedition education. We have these fun games, interactive games, where our learners can roll dice, answer questions, and really engage um, with some comprehension activities. Player two, way. it's your turn. Roll the die. Two. Move your piece two spaces. One. Two. What word describes trains in Japan? Fast. Good job. You've earned your spot. Player one, it's your turn. Roll the die. So that is a little bit of expedition education. It is also on the website. I'm not going to go back over there and show you guys. It's the same setup and structure as um, the other ones. You can go and explore those on your own. I want to respect y'all's time and kind of navigate through a few last pieces because I know y'all really want to see the switch scanning stuff. So um, Mr. Davis is going to find those instructional solutions on the website, review the program documents, lesson plans, quick lesson guides. They're included for each. Figure out where he wants to start and then assign those activities to his student. Play them on the Student Center app. Okay. Hopefully you're excited about some of the curriculum that you've seen that's pre-made for you. Now let's switch gears and let's talk about access methods. The Boardmaker Student Center app can be set up for touch enter, touch exit, switch scanning, mouse pause, and eye gaze. So all the activities that we just looked at are accessible with any of these access methods. You all are here to learn about switch scanning, right? So where our learners um, are either going to utilize one switch, the software is going to progress the um, switch for the uh, selection for them. They hit one switch to make a selection or two switches where they progress the switch, the selection themselves. And then when it gets where they want it to go, they make the selection with their second switch. Okay. We have lots of information in that course summary about who's more, pro like when to choose one, when to use two, some access method screening types of supports, that kind of stuff is included in this summary. Um, what I want to show you are some of the considerations for switch scanning in uh, the Boardmaker Student Center. We're going to need to set them up with either one or two switches. We're going to need to figure out what the scan speed is going to be if we're using one switch what scan patterns we want to utilize. Are we gonna use a Zoom feature to kind of help give some additional um, video, uh, visual support? And are we gonna add in any audio feedback, any audio support? I am gonna show you all a video that you have access to following this session. Um, it's a little bit longer, but it really does give a nice comprehensive overview of the access methods with some visual call outs that I think makes it a little bit more impactful um, rather than me just talking about it. So let's go ahead and watch this um, video on access. Boardmaker software is continuously improving, so there may be slight differences between the actual software and our training materials. All students need access to educational materials 
as they learn to read, develop math skills, and discover the world. But not all students can turn pages of books, use pencils to write, or use their voice to tell us what they know. Boardmaker provides curriculum, activities, and templates that are accessible to touch, switch, and eye gaze users. This is Penelope. She uses a switch to participate in classroom activities, and she's learning to use scanning to complete her assignments in the Boardmaker Student Center. Scanning provides people with significant motor disabilities a way to make selections when touch, mouse, and gaze interaction are not possible. Using the Boardmaker Student Center app on a tablet or computer, Penelope can answer multiple choice questions, flip pages of a book, complete a matching activity, spin a spinner for gameplay, and even write about her day. Any activity made with an interactive template in Boardmaker is accessible through one or two switch scanning. Learning opportunities abound for Penelope and other students with access differences. Let's set up the Student Center for scanning access. Log into the student's account to adjust settings like access that are unique for each student. From the Menu tab, select Settings. Then select Access Method. At the top, you'll see the student's username. Double check to make sure you're making changes to the right student account. Select Scanning. Settings for scanning populate to the left. Select each setting to further customize. The first setting is Scan Type. There are two options, one switch auto scan and two switch step scan. Penelope uses one switch auto scan. How does it work? The software automatically progresses the highlight through groups of selectable items on the screen. When the highlight reaches the desired group, she hits her switch to select it. Then the software progresses the highlight through each item in the selected group. When the highlight reaches the desired item, she hits her switch to select it. One switch auto scan requires fewer selections and is often used for individuals who can't hit a switch consistently. It requires more attention and wait time because the user must attentively wait for the scan to advance to their selection. Let's look at the settings for one switch auto scan. First, select one switch auto scan and the customizable settings will populate below. Use the up and down arrows to access the settings. If the student uses a keyboard as a switch, choose the key they will use to make a selection. Select Edit. Select the key the student uses as a switch and select OK. If the student uses an external switch, follow the directions on the switch and the device. Next, select how fast the scan will progress. Make sure to allow enough time for the student to process the items on the screen and process the highlight. The student also needs enough time to motorically plan and hit their switch. Next, select a transition time or how long the software will pause before starting the next scan pattern. Then, select a hold time or the amount of time the switch must be pushed to activate. If your student accidentally hits their switch occasionally, a longer hold time will prevent unintentional selections. Next, determine if the student will need access to the back and reset buttons. 
The back button sets the scan pattern up to the previous level. For example, if the scan pattern is scanning individual objects in a row, the back button would move the highlight back to scanning row by row. The reset button restarts the scan from the top level. The final option under One Switch Auto Scan is Scan Back Reset First. Select On to start the scan pattern with the back and or reset buttons. Back to Scan Type, the other option is Two Switch Step Scan. Ryan uses Two Switch Step Scan. He uses one switch to move the highlight at his own pace and a second switch to make a selection. Two switch step scan requires more motor control. The user needs two switch sites or enough control to hit a single switch, like a keyboard, in two different ways. Since the student progresses the scan at their own pace, two switch scanning decreases wait time. It also decreases the need for exact timing when hitting the second switch. To set up Two Switch Step Scan from the Scan Type screen, select Two Switch Step Scan. If the keyboard acts as the switch, choose the input for progressing the highlight and the input for selecting the object. Select Edit. Select the key and select OK. Similar to One Switch Scanning, Determine the hold time and the need for the back and reset buttons. Now let's look at the other scanning settings. These will be the same whether the student uses one switch or two. Select a scan pattern. Row column scans items row by row from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. When a row is selected, the items in the row are scanned individually from left to right. Column Row scans items column by column from the left of the page to the right of the page. When a column is selected, the items in the column are scanned top to bottom. Linear scans items individually from a left to right, top to bottom order. Select the number of passes, the number of times the scan will pass a target or group, and what the software will do after completing the selected number of passes. Go back a level, reset, or stop scanning. Next, select Highlighting. Highlighting is a visual cue that alerts the student to the selectable area on the screen. Choose None if the student will use a different feature to identify the selectable items. Most students will need a highlight option. Choose Outline to provide a square around the selectable buttons. Overlay to highlight the selectable buttons in a transparent shade or Invert to invert the colors of the selectable objects. Select a color for the highlight outline or overlay if prompted. The final highlighting setting is Zoom. Select On to prompt the software to automatically zoom in on the button that's being scanned. If your student is new to scanning, use observation data and recommendations from the student's team to determine the best settings. Give the student ample opportunities to practice, and if the settings need adjusting, it's easy to go back in and increase hold time, change the highlight color, or even switch from one switch auto scan to two switch scanning. Changes you make will apply to all activities the student plays in their account. Let's look at a matching activity accessed through scanning in the Boardmaker Student Center. This is how the activity functions with one switch auto scan. 
Notice the software automatically progresses the highlight in a selected pattern, column row, and at the selected speed. When the student hits the switch and holds it down for the set time, the highlighted column is selected. The software waits and then progresses through the items in the column. This requires a lot of active attention and precise timing to hit the switch at the right time. Now, let's look at the same activity with two switch step scan. The first switch activates the highlight and the second switch selects the button. The student controls how quickly the scan progresses using switch one. Notice how quickly they move it when they know the correct answer. When the highlight reaches the desired column, they hit their second switch to select it. Since the student controls the scan, it will stay on the selected column until they can metaphorically plan and hit the second switch. Notice how the software zooms on the selectable buttons. Penelope and Ryan can complete this activity and all of their assignments through scanning. For detailed step-by-step -step instructions on access methods, so I know that that was a lot of information. Again, you all have access to that video in your handout. I just want to emphasize that all of those um, settings are taking place in the Student Center. It's where we play our activities, but it's also where we customize our access methods. And that you don't have to go in and do that for every single activity. You just create those settings for your student and then whatever activity you assign them is automatically in that access method. Okay, so I know that I'm a little over time. I apologize for that, but it's just so much information. I get so excited about it. Um, so uh, I will turn it over to Heidi now, let her wrap things up, but just know that if you have any questions, I am happy to stick around for a few minutes and answer. All right, we can go ahead and stop the recording. And um, if you wanna stay on for a few, I can leave the Zoom room. We can leave it open for a little bit longer if you have some specific questions. Stop.